Study Spanish. Okay, perfect. I've got my to-do list sorted for the day. <sighs> I should probably check my phone messages now so I don't have to check them again later. I'm sure it only take a second. <laughs> I saw the TikTok you sent to me. <laughs> I was literally about to send that exact same TikTok to you. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to think like a polyglot and not quit when it comes to language learning. The first thing that all language learners do is have a schedule because when you create a written schedule that says what you're going to do, how long you're going to do it for and what time you're going to do it, it reduces and completely removes pretty much the mental friction. The friction every day of what am I going to study, how long am I going to study it for, when am I going to do it? All of these questions at the end of a long day of like going to work or school or whatever it is you do at the end of the day to now think about what chapter, what video, all of these questions, what exercises are you going to do? Speaking, listening, reading to decide then on the spot and have to make that decision every single day. It's a lot having things like that scheduled in. So when 7 p.m. hits every day, I know what it is that I'm going to do. I'm not confused, looking around, making excuses. And I'm sure you've seen this in your own life and other things that you've done that are not language related. But when you have a bit of uncertainty or there's a period in which you don't know what to do, that opens the doors for excuses. Oh my gosh, there's a squirrel outside. As I was saying before that squirrel rudely interrupted me, Find people online that you relate to, that motivate you, that inspire you to carry on learning your language. For example, subscribe to channels where your language is being discussed. When I started learning Spanish, I didn't know anyone else around me that was. And even now, all of the people that I do know that are learning Spanish are you guys. The people around me in person were not trying to learn a second language. I live in England. People here don't learn second languages. Sometimes, I guess, but for the most part, my friends and the people that I'm surrounded with and the people that I love, my family, nobody understood why I wanted to learn a second language. It was just so random. It was like, Beatrice, you live in London. Like everybody speaks English. Like they thought I was gonna give up on it and it was gonna be a passing thing that I just do for maybe a week on Duolingo and that's it. And if I had just had my friends in real life that maybe didn't believe that I would be fluent, Maybe I wouldn't have been. Maybe if my friends in real life were the only people that I could speak to about learning languages, I wouldn't be fluent. Maybe I would have given up. I don't know. I don't know. And I guess we'll never know. Definitely engage with the online communities for your hobbies. That will make you so much more involved and it will make it so much harder for you to give up. It will make it so much harder for you to quit. When you have friends and you have YouTubers that you like and you have people that you look up to and they inspire you and motivate you, when you have all of these people online that you're engaging with, it just makes it so much harder to close your book and walk away. That's why I'm strongly emphasizing don't just rely on your friendships in real life because those people around you might not be interested in the same things that you are in the same way you might not be interested in the same things that they are. And I know every polyglot will agree with me when I say this, but don't learn the language for the wrong reasons. Not because you think it will help you advance your career at work or because you heard that a certain economy is about to boom. Don't learn the language for a boy, don't learn the language for a girl. It just won't work. I tried to study German because at university I studied economics and I heard that the German economy was really good when it came to manufacturing. So it made perfect sense for me to decide to learn German. But what I soon realized as I was studying German every day, when things started to get difficult and I wasn't enjoying it as much and I needed some solid motivation to fall back on, my initial motivations were weak. My motivation was simply because I thought it might help me at work. English is a lingua franca. What that basically means is the whole world speaks English, more or less. Speaks English or is learning English. And if your native language is English, this can be quite unfortunate because yes, you are motivated to learn another language and you want to learn another language, but everybody from those languages are busy learning your language. That kind of allows you to be lazy. When you are studying the language and you are getting tired and you're going over grammar again and again and again that you don't understand, your why am I doing this it needs to be more than so I can speak it at work. If your native language is English, majority of the time, there will be a translator there. Learn languages that you actually like. 
learn languages that you actually care about, to dedicate hours, days, weeks, months, years to something, you really have to be passionate about it. It can't be because you have to or because somebody's making you. And that is what happened to a lot of us at school. If you remember being in high school and being forced to learn French or Spanish, you probably didn't get fluent after that despite the amount of hours and hours of classes that we had. So when your reasons are not genuine, it will be so much harder to learn the language. Hi there, my name is Beatrice. I taught myself Spanish in one year. I love languages and everything to do with productivity. I also make videos like this every single week. And a language learning mindset that I really, really strongly advise that you adopt is the saying, that time was going to pass anyway. Don't worry and panic and be put off by how much time it's going to take. Whether it takes a year, six months, two years, five years, 10, that time was going to pass anyway. Say you are 25 and you want to learn Chinese and you've been given an estimate that at an hour a day, Chinese will take you 10 years to learn. Some people would say 10 years, that's a really, really long time to spend learning Chinese. After 10 years, then I'll be fluent, what? And that would put a lot of people off. But this is where polyglots think differently. And this is how I want you guys to think as well. That 10 years, whether you decide to put in that 30 minutes to an hour of Chinese a day, those 10, those 10 years were still going to pass. You will still be 35 from 10 years on you will still be 35 regardless of whether you learn chinese or not so you might as well you might as well study the chinese and be a 35 year old that can speak chinese rather than a 35 year old that can't and that is the exact philosophy that i apply to language learning and beyond and my last bit of advice would be set yourself milestones and goals so it doesn't feel like an endless, endless cycle of learning a language and not getting anywhere. Especially if you don't have those goalposts, you're not really going to know when you're progressing. Like no one is going to turn around and tell you, wow, you've progressed so much. The only person that's really tracking your progress on a weekly basis is you. Yes, after six months, somebody would notice, oh, you're actually kind of sounding fluent now. But when it comes to on a weekly basis, on a daily basis of those small, small milestones that you can see, but other people can't, setting milestones really helps keep track of that. So some of the milestones that I would set for myself is I would say, I want to be able to read this article and understand it in a month. Or on TikTok, there'll be a 30 second video that I would not understand completely. And I would save it. I would save that video and I would keep checking every month coming back to it until I could understand it. And then one month I came back to the video and it was easy. It was easy and I understood everything that was being said, but I had that video saved because I knew that one day I would be able to understand it. I have vlogs on this channel. I have comprehensible input on this channel. It doesn't even have to be my video, but have videos in the language that you want to learn, in your target language, have videos like that saved. Those videos that felt so, so fast, so fast that you had no idea what they were saying, you'll listen to it and it'll just be easy. That is such a rewarding feeling and it shows that you're making progress because it's tangible. The wind is actually really doing its thing. I tried to film outside. I was like, I'll change up the scenery every now and again but the wind oh my gosh but thank you so much for watching obviously please subscribe if you liked this video this is the place to be if you want to reach all your goals for 2025 you love productivity or learning languages thanks for watching bye